Hi guys, I'm Gordon. And I'm Alice. And we're roaming with the Ramses. We want to start this video out with a big thank you because we hit a big milestone for our channel during the last couple of weeks and that's 4,000 subscribers. I wish I had confetti. Poof! Right? <laughs> Yay! So, thank you so much for hitting the like, hitting the subscribe, and leaving us comments on our videos. It really helps us out a lot and we just really appreciate it. We want you to know we appreciate it. Um, today, we're going to talk about RV insurance and we're going to be answering your questions about RV insurance mm -hmm. and what to expect after the accident. I have to throw a little disclaimer in here first though right. and that is that neither of us are insurance specialists or anything like that. Any information we're going to be providing you as we answer your questions is all about experience that we gained through this accident. Now I also want to recommend if you haven't looked at it yet I'll put a link in for the wrecked video and you'll get the opportunity to see what happened that got us to where we are now. And then I'll also include a link for after the wrecked video to give you an idea of some of the stuff that we were going through as we were going through it. And in last week's video, when we did the reveal of our new trailer, we asked you guys to give us a bunch of questions that you'd like us to answer about our insurance. So that's where we're at today. Yes. So we're gonna start off with the very first question. Did we have roadside assistance? Yes, we do have roadside assistance, but roadside assistance I think is more for your vehicle. Because if you stop and think about it, what are you gonna do with a 41 and a half foot RV that is 13 feet, five inches tall, you're not gonna put that on a flatbed. And since all four tires were damaged in the accident, you're not gonna tow it anywhere and no one had tires in stock right. because they're special tires. So, yes, we have roadside assistance. No, it didn't help us out. <laughs> <laughs> I think roadside assistance is really gonna depend on what you need at that time. If you need somebody to come out and change a tire on your trailer, roadside assistance probably works great. However, right. I've seen several videos where it takes a long time for them to get there. So just keep that in mind when it comes to roadside assistance. So moving on to our next question. Yes, I have a list because yes, there's a lot of questions. because we have a list. <laughs> Not something I normally do, but I took all these questions right from comments in our, in our videos. Correct. So our next question is, what insurance company do we recommend? Now, we're not going to necessarily recommend yeah. anyone specifically. We have Geico as our insurance carrier for both our truck and our RV. But what we will recommend when it comes to finding an insurance company is to submit several questions to each company, you know, as far as like your vehicle information and then types of coverage. Mm -hmm. And then make sure that you go to say three different insurance companies, give them the same information and ask for the same type of coverage, compare the quotes, and then you're gonna have to make a decision of which one makes you feel the most comfortable perhaps. Right. Just make sure that you're comparing those apples to apples and not right. getting into your apples and your oranges. You know, you want to make sure that you're getting the right policy for what you're right. doing. Google reviews are also a thing that you can do. Review the company that you're thinking about. Go into some RV forums on Facebook and ask questions through Facebook. Hey, what insurance company do you use? Have you ever had to have a claim against your policy? Mm -hmm. If so, how did that work out for you? Because I'm considering insurance company A, B, or C. Right. Um, so moving on to our next question is, did we have full replacement and full time insurance? Yes, we do. When we signed up for the policy, we made it very clear that we were full-time in the RV and we were covered that way. Uh, so they knew right up front that that's what we were doing. And as far as the replacement cost goes, uh, we have um, a full replacement cost from zero to five years. Uh, so that really was a good benefit for us um, in this situation. Uh, so yes, we had full replacement and we have um, uh, full-time insurance through GEICO. Right, and it's something you wanna make sure that when you're going through it all, that uh, you go over with your insurance company for those specifically. You gotta make sure that they understand you're in it full-time, and the full replacement only costs a couple extra dollars. Yeah. So it's, it's well worth it. So next question is, did we have to pay deductible? It's kind of an easy answer. No. 
Um, I believe what happened was our insurance company went after the other driver's insurance company to collect that $500 deductible. Right. Um, in the early stages, Geico told us that we could handle this two different ways. We could either file a claim with Geico or we could communicate with the other driver's information. And we made a decision that we'd probably be best off going with Geico since we pay them and we have a relationship with them and we know nothing about the other driver's insurance. Exactly. That, that was the biggest part is if you don't know the coverage of, and you're not going to know somebody else's coverage, go with your own insurance because you know what your coverage is right. and let your insurance company get reimbursed from that other company. That way you know what you're getting. Because remember, your insurance company represents you. His insurance company represents him. That's right. kind of the way I looked at it also. So the next question was pretty good. I mean, it, <laughs> it, it made me laugh. So right. I definitely had to throw it in here. And that is, did you really want me to like this video of your accident? Yeah. Yeah. We do. You know, it, like I said earlier, it helps us. And it's just like this video right now. If you like the information you're getting, don't forget to hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber yet and you like what we're talking about, hit the subscribe button, you know, ring that little bell. That way you'll get notified when we add new content. So yes, hit the like. Yes, please. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so moving on, did our insurance cover the cost of hotels and meals? It did. Um, we, our policy personally had a thousand dollar reimbursement for that type of situation. Um, but we were also able to go over to the other insurance company and reimbur get reimbursed through them also. So yes, we did get reimbursed for that. Now, for, as far as food goes, we did not put in our receipts for food, but I did submit a $500 bill for the food that we lost in the refrigerator and freezer because of the propane being um, broke off and not being able to use that. And they did reimburse for what we had in the refrigerator and the freezer. Now you did have, we did have to submit receipts for all that stuff. So make sure that uh, if you're talking about a lodging receipt or meals or food or something like that, you keep those receipts because it's easier to, to talk to them and ask them, will you reimburse me for this? And you already have a receipt for it. You know, worst thing they can say is no. And then you've got a receipt for nothing. Right. Well, for the food in the refrigerator, all I had to do is send them pictures of it. I didn't have the receipts. Of course, right. I don't save those receipts, um, but they just took a picture of it and it was fine. Um, so the next one is kind of like a two part question. So I'm going to read both parts first. Did we settle the claim under our insurance or the other drivers? And what happens if the other driver doesn't carry enough insurance? We kind of touched base on this a little bit, but we did use both actually. Mm -hmm. um, we used ours primarily, but like Alice said just a minute ago, we did go to the other driver's insurance when we reached our cap of $1,000 emergency for our lodging. We went to the other insurance and asked them to compensate us for that, which they did. Mm -hmm. um, and with regards to what happens if the other driver's insurance doesn't cover it? So the way that it was explained to me and the reason why we decided to go with our own insurance is if the other driver did not have enough inf uh, insurance coverage to cover our vehicle, then they would have to come back to Geico anyhow. So we just kind of skipped that whole step and just stayed with our own insurance because we know what we have for coverage. Right. So if your insurance gives you that option, that's just something to think about. Right. So why did it take so long to get a decision to total our trailer? Six it, weeks. Well, the decision <laughs> didn't take six weeks. The whole process, the whole took, process six took six weeks. weeks. But the decision to total our trailer probably took close to four weeks. And the reason it took that long is first, it took five days to get it towed from the scene of the accident or actually the rest area mm -hmm. where it was to a tow yard. Mm -hmm. where it sat and then our insurance agent went over and did his initial evaluation which we hated <laughs> um, and then the decision was on us to get it to a repair shop so we had to choose a repair shop now this was key so when you have to choose a repair shop you need to call several different repair shops and ask about what their wait time is we called one shop and he told me straight out 
if your RV was on my lot right now, I wouldn't even be able to look at it for two months because I have other customers ahead of you and I'm not going to let you jump the line. I understand his, his rationale, but I certainly don't want to wait two months for him right. to even look, look at, at it. it. So then we kept moving on and we found a repair shop that said, I can get a look at it within two weeks and hopefully get you a price. Now there was one caveat, him not being an RV dealer, Keystone dealer, he had to take any of the equipment that he needed to repair or replace, you know, parts items. He had to take those to a Keystone dealer to get an actual cost for replacement so he could build up his quote. So once he got our trailer, it took him two weeks to get his numbers. And then his numbers came in to a point where it was going to be totaled. Now, I will say on behalf of Geico, right after they got the report from the repair shop, same day, they made the decision to total the trailer. Right. So, unfortunately, it took longer than what we would have liked, but the process is what it is. We were able to expedite the process by finding a repair shop that was able to look at it in two weeks versus two months. So just a tip on your repair shop. We kept getting told to call auto body repair shops. There, we were looking at, we like, what do you mean right. an auto body? Why an auto body? Well, there are actually a lot of auto body shops out there that repair RVs. So there's your tip. For this video is call the auto body shops because the dealers are just so full that right. they can repair these things also if if a repair was going right. to be needed who came up with the actual cash value that we were going to receive for a payout so this was kind of a blend really um when we were in the process our claims adjuster suggested that we go to nada input all the information for our trailer and get an idea of what the expectation was. Now, I also reached out to Keystone, gave them the serial number or the VIN number of our RV and asked them for a write-out of all the optional equipment that it had. That way I could get an accurate price for that as well. So with all that information, I entered it into NADA. I got a price range, but then the insurance company, they have their own system also. Um, they ran it through and then after the decision to total it had been made, they talked to us. Their price was right within the range mm -hmm. that we had already expected to get through the NADA site. So we settled quickly. We didn't find a reason to debate. And honestly, we ended up getting paid more for our wrecked trailer than what we had paid for it initially. Yeah. So it definitely seemed fair. Right. <laughs> So our next topic is a checklist on what to do after an accident. Some of this makes sense. Um, but for me, because I investigated traffic accidents, you know, I definitely say photograph and video everything. You can't have too many because you never know what somebody's going to need. So just take a whole bunch of video and a whole bunch of photos and make sure that you have enough to give to anybody who should ask for it right get information from any witnesses we had somebody stop they mm -hmm. were traveling behind us they stopped at the other vehicle first and then they stopped at us they talked to us told us what they had seen i asked him hey do you mind if i take your name and your phone number that way when the trooper gets here if he needs to talk to you he can call you and and get your input he said not a problem so that was a, that was a witness that I sp spoke to and got his information for the trooper. Um, other driver information, if you can get it, and at the time we were separated by a couple hundred yards, but I did get the other driver's information and insurance information from the trooper when the trooper yes. arrived. Usually they put that on your police reports, but just make, you know, whenever they give you a copy of whatever they give you at your site of the accident, make sure that that information right. is on there because you're going to need that. Uh, that was one of the first things that our insurance company asked me for. The case so number. It was, yeah, so it was a good thing that I had that information. The only thing that we did not get was the policy number, but you can just call that other insurance company and get that right. information too. Um, call your insurance company. You know, right. as soon as you can, right. get in touch with your insurance company, explain to them what happened, and get the ball rolling as soon as possible, knowing that the sooner you get it started, the sooner it's going to end. Um, document, document, document. Right. I can't tell you how important it is to document everything, whether it's photo, video, write 
the information down, you know, I mean, I'm getting a little old, so I get forgetful <laughs> sometimes. So I find it easier just to make notes. Yep. It's part of the old police officer in me, yeah. make notes for my memory later on. Um, luckily this was an easy thing for us. The other driver admitted what he had done and that he was at fault. Um, so some of that stuff we didn't need, but I had it just in case. Right. Um, so the final question is our thoughts on how the insurance dealt with us and will we stay with the same insurance? Well, yes, we would definitely are going to stay with Geico. Um, there were some things that happened that we didn't like, but that doesn't make the insurance um, at fault or right. doing something bad. Um, we just didn't like the answers and that's on us. Um, but we dealt with it. We pushed through it and uh, we understood. Right. Um, doesn't make you happy, but we understood. <laughs> <laughs> there, there were several times but, that we wished we were getting different answers or that they would be quicker to respond. Right. But you have also have to remember that one of the things that we learned when we first started the ball was that, you know, Hurricane Ida had just happened a few days prior to our accident. So the insurance companies were flooded with phone calls yeah. from people making insurance claims for the flood damage. Right. Because we did, we got a couple of comments on our video um, the, the day of the wreck. Uh, about the music right. and that's because I was on hold for two and a half hours and that was the hold music and I yeah I should have turned my phone down I didn't think about it because I didn't want to miss when somebody answered that phone call so we do apologize for the music because uh, it is bad music, <laughs> <It's terrible>. <laughs> music. <laughs> but I was on hold for two and a half right. hours and that was very stressful in itself is you know here we are stranded in a, a, a rest area and you can't get through to the insurance company right. not their fault either you know you you, know, you just have to kind of deal with what's going on and just think it out and talk to each other and try to come up with that best plan as possible in order to accomplish everything that you need. Right. In the end, I think dealing with the insurance company was good. Ab above average. <laughs> I'm going to say above average. You know, I'm thinking maybe a three out of five, um, maybe three and a half. And the reason I say that is because there were a couple times accidents were made that shouldn't have been made. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it was good. The one key I will definitely tell you that you need to do when you're doing this is call all the time. Yes, I called almost every day like the last three weeks. Because every time you talk to somebody, you're going to get a different answer. So if you don't like the answer that you got, call back because you're going to get somebody else right. and they're going to give you a different answer. Uh, so And record that. Not you necessarily know. on a phone, but you I know, just wrote it down. Alice yeah. had notes like crazy. She every time she went to make a phone call, she'd get her notebook out. She'd write down the date, the time. She always asked, "What's your name?" Whenever mm -hmm. she was talking with people, that way she could reference her notes and say, "Well, you know, Stephanie or whatever told me A, B, and C, and you're telling me something different. I need to know exactly what the answer is." Right. I mean, because one day we were told that the check is going to be in the mail at ten o'clock in the morning. Right. Well, I call the next day and the check hasn't even been cut out of the computer yet. Right. So those are the type of things that we were dealing with right in the end. Um, but we did get a hold of a couple of people who were really helpful and made it go a little bit smoother and got it done. And here we are today. Right. And here we are today, <laughs> right? We're in our new RV, which we gave you a tour of a week ago. We're in Lafayette, Louisiana. Today is Veterans Day, so I'd like to say... Thank you to all the veterans who support the channel and all the veterans who served and even the families. Don't yes. forget to thank the families of the veterans because their contribution allows veterans to do what they do.